Now over to our next speaker, which I am very excited to introduce. We're going to be hearing from Harry Atkinson, um, who Venetrix actually placed into a role. Um, and he's now head of business development and high-velocity sales at Comply Advantage. He started his career at HP before moving to Blue Prism, Instabase, where he moved into leadership, and he now works at Comply Advantage. Uh, Harry's mantra is, in terms of leadership, not being in charge of people, but taking care of those in your charge. So, let's hear it, Harry. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the, the lovely introduction. Um, so, who am I? I'm Harry. Um, uh, yeah, actually, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, what have I done? Uh, well, once upon a time, I was a BDR, just like most people in this room. Um, and I didn't do any of what I'm about to talk to you about. Um, but I did enough to land a job at a company that taught me everything I knew. Um, and there I became one of the first ADRs, which I can talk more about at another time. Um, and we scaled that function to become one of the most successful teams, not just at Instabase, but in the industry. Um, and then I recently joined Comply Advantage, which is a really cool, exciting company that's using AI to tackle financial crime. Um, and there I lead business development and velocity sales, which is another super new, exciting, fun thing that I'm doing. Um, and during all of that, I've worked, learned one really important lesson, um, especially as a leader. When you're trying to hire amazing people, you need a framework that can objectively measure and assess great talent. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you about ICE, right? Um, not frozen water. Um, ICE is a attribute-based hiring framework that I've used religiously since I learned and was taught about how to use this framework. Um, and it's used by some of the most successful playbook companies in our industry to hire the smartest, most coachable, most gritty people in our market. But when I was breaking into software, I didn't know what ICE was. I'd never heard of it. Um, I didn't know how I was being assessed when I was interviewing. I didn't know how leaders were viewing me. I didn't know how to brand myself, uh, either during an interview process or online and generally, like my, my LinkedIn was, was weak, there was nothing there. I didn't know what version of me I was putting out in the market, which when you're early in career is so important to be conscious of. Um, now, many of you would have probably watched the sales conference talk a few years ago by somebody called Luke Rogers. Um, Luke is who coached me on ICE and how to use it and what it is during my time at Instabase and Comply Advantage. Um, Luke mentioned ICE as part of his talk on the three R's, which is recruitment, retainment, revenue. Um, if you haven't watched it, I strongly suggest you go and do that. But what I want to talk to you about today is two things. Firstly, how you can brand yourself and appeal to the top playbook companies when you're looking for your next role. That role that could be the role that changes the trajectory of your career. And two, if you're a leader, how you can use this framework to test for a specific number of attributes that we know are vital to be successful in our industry. So if we break down ICE, um, I double C double E, first being IQ, so we break I into IQ and EQ, um, character, coachability, entrepreneurship, and experience. So IQ could be a number of things. It could be educational background. Did they go to a good uni? Did they get great GCSEs, A-levels? But it could also be, have they done internships, right? Have they done something different that makes them stand out? Have they done anything extracurricular? Um, Another great way to test ICE during the interview process is do they understand what your organization does? Right? Are it early on in the process, have they, have they gone and researched and learned it? And more importantly, can they concisely communicate that back to you? Because that's a really strong signal of intelligence. Secondly is EQ. Right? This is you know, relationship and rapport building. Right? This is why personally I think it's really important, at least for one or two of the interviews, to get you in person. What are you just like in an office socially? Can you build relationships? Do you, do you build meaningful relationships during an interview process with people? Character is what I call someone's personal why. So we've already touched on this today a bit, right? Grit, resilience. Um, why do you want to come and work for an organization where the way you think is going to be questioned, what you say, what you do, it's going to be really difficult. You, but you're going to learn at a hyper growth phase. Like most people don't want to do that. They want to do easy things. So why do you want to do something that is going to be really hard all the time? And everybody's got a reason, right? And the ones I often hear, and, and they're kind of my reasons as well, I want the ability to create financial freedom for myself. Um, I want to work with really talented people that push me to get better. And 
I want to sell and work with cool technology. But there's always a reason behind that. And someone's personal why is usually formed in their kind of early years, child, teenager, early 20s. Everyone's got one and they're all completely different. Um, and it's like I joined Instabase, I'd never thought of mine. So I got asked it and I didn't even know what personal why was, but I went away and with some help of a couple of people, developed mine. And knowing what it is was a difference for me between getting that first ADR job at Instabase and not, because I knew it and I could speak about it. Um, then coachability. So this one is best tested throughout an interview process. And like, how can you test coachability? Ask for feedback in every single phase of your interview process and then act on that feedback in the next interview. So at Comply, we have four or five stage interview processes and every leader knows to offer feedback and then the next leader will specifically test that exact piece of feedback as a way to test whether the candidate has gone away, internalize what they were told and what they were offered up and actually worked on it. Um, entrepreneurship. So have you done something special and different? All right, have you traveled? Have you worked abroad? Have you started a business? Any form of side hustle? Right, something that's different and unusual and weird and wacky. Um, people like this, they're often comfortable with ambiguity. Uh, they like to solve problems. Um, and they're curious. And we know how important being intellectually curious is in this job because if you're not, and if you don't go the furthest and go the extra mile, you can bet the other 99 people in this room are gonna do that and book the meeting that you can't book. Uh, and the experience, so experience is really the least important and it's kind of in this order. Um, at Comply, I don't look for experience. I look for the first four. But have they got any form of sales experience? Right? Have they worked in customer service jobs? Have they worked in any other industry, insurance, financial services, whatever it may be? But have they done part-time retail jobs? Have they had that job in Sainsbury's or Tesco where they've been spat and thrown on by customers? Like, have they done something where you're like, okay, you've probably got a transferable skill? Um, I always think back to one specific candidate when I think through ICE. I mean, I've hired a bunch of phenomenal people, um, but one candidate not too long ago, during the interview process, just started reaching out to everybody in the company that I was in at the point, um, like 11 people. And uh, people were coming to me that didn't even know or shouldn't even have known I was hiring somebody. So, oh, how are they getting on the interview process? And what they'd done through their really strong EQ, and I spoke to them about it after they got the job, and they said, well, you told me in the first conversation to run it like a deal. So if you're the EB, I need a bunch of coaches. And they'd met so many people some that I thought they would and that any good SDR interviewing for a company for a job would. They might have met SDRs and AEs, but then they went and met the head of product or a marketing manager and found out like, what I care about and at the time what Luke cared about and what other leaders in the space cared about. Um, so by the time we hired this person, it kind of felt like they'd already worked here because they knew everybody. There was no new, we used to run like an introduction 20 minute coffee chat. There was no one new for them to meet, right? And like the, the levels of EQ and coachability they displayed was like nothing I'd ever seen. I didn't do that, I didn't even know to do that. So from using ICE, I've personally been able to hire dozens of really talented early in career people, almost all of whom have gone on to get promoted. Right, I put it very publicly on my LinkedIn that I've promoted 88% of SDRs I've hired. Um, and there's a lot of talk online right now about short interview processes. Um, you know, having one, two, maybe three calls. Personally, I don't think anyone can assess excellence in two calls. Or I think you'd struggle to assess excellence, right? Um, and this isn't just from the perspective of the employer, this is from the candidate as well, right? Any great candidate is gonna wanna assess that the company they're speaking to fits their criteria as much as if the company's assessing that you as a candidate fit their criteria. Um, yeah, you can't test if someone's coachable in two calls. So you know, we, we run four or five stages. They're not all hours long, but we do run at quite a few stages. And that's because great people, they wanna be tested. Like they wanna work hard for that job that could change the trajectory of their career. They don't want it easy. Like I've interviewed so many phenomenal people and the, the buzz they get from being tested is phenomenal. And great people want that, right? Um, so, to summarize, ICE is an attribute-based hiring framework that is used by a select few of very successful companies in our industry. 
if you're an IC or a leader and you're going for the next, next role, that next job that you think could change the trajectory of your career and your life, view yourself and brand yourself through this lens of ICE because that's how you're going to stand out instantly for all of these top organizations. And if you're a leader and you want to hire great people, this framework has proven successful for dozens of organizations, right? It's not my framework for hiring. This has proven successful to hire phenomenal people time and time again. So if you're struggling to hire great people, I'd strongly suggest that you take a look into ICE. Thank you.